Let me finish. I still don't know whether you let will, me, whether you will let me finish. vote against their plans let for me a referendum. Finish. Let me finish. You can't expect me to pronounce on a bill that hasn't been published and nobody's been seen. That's ridiculous. The point I am making is you that, that Labour doesn't Labour doesn't fear the verdict of the Scottish people. It appears that the Tories and the Liberals currently do. And the SNP also fear the verdict of the Scottish people. Now, one of the things that needs to happen for Scottish politics to move on and stop being so short term is that we should listen to people like the CBI who say that the damaging it's damaging for this uncertainty to go on. People like Tom Hunter who say they're undecided, but they think the damage it's damaging uncertainty. And the only people who don't want this issue to come to a head are SNP-supporting businessmen like Tom Farmer okay. and Brian Suter. That's bad for Scotland, and we believe that the people should be allowed to speak. What and that's what will endure, that the SNP have run scared, and never again, and certainly not in the run-up to general election, will a single SNP activist be able to say to any member of the Labour Party, that we were afraid of the voice of Scotland. What made it you is think, the SNP who are afraid. What made you think that you could introduce your own bill to achieve an earlier referendum? Well, obviously, there are a whole series of parliamentary procedures, and we, of course, said we think the, damaging, the uncertainty is damaging. We are now in a position where the SNP not only don't want an early referendum, they are actively willing to block anybody else trying to end their grudge and grievance politics that we continue to see on a weekly basis in Scotland. Let's talk a little bit about you. Have you considered your position this week? Have you thought about resigning in the, the middle of all the angst there has been? No, because I think as some of the more thoughtful pieces uh, in the Sunday papers make clear, what happened this week was that Labour said, you know, this issue's been around for 30 years. We don't fear the verdict of the Scottish people. We said to the SNP, get on with it, the uncertainty is damaging, and they have run scared. And the right place for the Labour Party to be is on the side of the people, and that's where we are. Did you realise how much trouble you'd cause? Well, I think big decisions are always controversial. I mean, I remember in 1996 when the Prime Minister, after, I have to say, for two years, that was then Tony Blair, he'd spent two years as leader of the Labour Party saying, we didn't need a referendum, we didn't need a referendum. He was leader he bravely, of the Labour Party, right enough, when he, he called bravely, his referendum. He, and, in, and we uh, had no Scottish Parliament. Devolution. And he bravely came to Scotland and said, I'm sorry, I think we need to have a referendum. And in many ways, once all the sound and fury of the fun of the press of the last few days have passed, the issue that endures in Scotland is that Labour is also saying, after 30 years, let's see these is this issue resolved sooner is rather than later and don't let the uncertainty continue. Is the rift between yourself and Gordon Brown irreparable now? No. I mean... I I think you saw on the press day the Prime How Minister's support for me and, 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 and the support for him. I mean, you know, Gordon Brown and I have long been colleagues and remain friends. What you've seen this week is the right of the Labour Party in the Scottish Parliament to do whatever is necessary. And to Brian Wilson the said if indeed that was a unilateral decision that you took to, to take that position, he doesn't see it like that. He says that makes your position untenable. Well, I don't think Brian has ever been a long supporter of devolution or indeed a long supporter of, of the Prime Minister. So I think what matters is where are we at the end of this week? Scotland wants to speak and the SNP government is denying it the chance. That's what happened this week. Haven't you weakened uh, Prime Minister at the worst possible time, having suffered, as he had last weekend, the worst defeat for Labour in 40 years? No, not for a moment. I have the highest regard for the Prime Minister. But the issue for Scottish politics is you've why them, you? is our Scottish government unwilling to put its money where its mouth is? That's what the issue in Scotland is. Not just today, tomorrow, but in the run-up to the general election and beyond. But the issue is also that you've weakened your own party leader and Prime Minister at the worst possible time and caused confusion in the Cabinet. Well, I mean, I don't accept that. What is important is that Scottish politics is now clear that our own government in Scotland won't let the people of Scotland have their say. Why did you do this? To make yourself different, distinct from Gordon Brown? No, I mean, as some of the press have, have speculated on, it's a position that I personally have held for many months, but the responsibility of leadership... Was there malice? Is that none whatsoever. The responsibility of leadership 
is that you move when you think you will command majority support. And indeed, there was overwhelming support from the Labour group of MSPs in Holyrood, overwhelming support uh, from the Scottish Executive. You move at a time when you think you command support of the people. And when, and I just point to last week, and when you think the uncertainty has reached such a point that is damaging the country. And that is the place we reached, where the SNP constantly pick fights, allege that people support them, but won't have it tested. There is a lot of adverse comment in the press today, including apparently from unnamed Labour MSPs. It suggested in some quarters that there's an element of madness to all of this. What do you say to that? Well, you know, politics is a, is, a, is a rough trade. I look at what was said in the weekend after uh, Tony Blair came to Scotland and said we need a referendum to have a Scottish Parliament. I just say history judged that he was right. I have no doubt that history will judge that the right place for the Labour Party to be is to be on the side of the people in Scotland in making a choice, whenever that choice comes. But we will know that between now and the general election, the SNP are running scared because they want that referendum at a time that is nothing to do with Scotland making a choice and everything to do with a narrow partisan agenda. And they will be exposed on that whenever it comes. You'll still be leading Labour at Holyrood when the general election comes around, will you? I very much hope so. You don't sound very sure. No, I want to continue to lead the Labour Party and will do so. And I am pleased that in the last year, when Labour lost, and if we were having this discussion at any point in the last year, Glenn, you would have said, have we accepted losing? Have we accepted opposition? I point you to we said we would listen. We have listened and led on the creation of the Kalman Commission to look against it again at devolution. And we have led amongst the opposition parties on saying, actually, it's about time we call the SNP's bluff and let Scotland speak. Okay. Wendy Alexander, leader of Labour in the Scottish Parliament. Thanks very much indeed. And if Wendy Alexander's name wasn't well known at Westminster a week ago, it is now, but perhaps for all the wrong reasons. Wendy Alexander tied the UK Cabinet up in knots this week. At one point, we were told Her Majesty's government agreed with her call for an early referendum. I agree with Wendy Alexander uh, in terms of saying if Alex Salmond is going to bang on about having a referendum, uh, then he needs to have the courage to put that to people. Uh, and then let's join the So the, the Cabinet fight. does agree with this, does it? Uh, indeed, and, and, and that Thank is you. the position that we've got. But in order to back up Labour's Scottish leader, the Cabinet would have had to meet, discuss and agree its position which is not something the Culture Secretary could recall. What was discussed? What was decided at the Cabinet meeting on a referendum for Scotland on uh, independence? There, there wasn't uh, any decision taken about, uh, was it about, discussed? about this issue. Um, I, if it was, it was only in passing. And, uh, I have well, to either say, it was I, or it wasn't. Well, I, I wasn't there for the whole thing, I have to be honest, actually. Um, so I, 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 I don't recall it being discussed in any detail, Andrew, nor, nor was any decision taken. The reason he couldn't remember Cabinet backing a vote on independence is because it wasn't discussed, according to two well-placed UK government sources who've spoken to the politics show. That helps explain why, on question time, the Work and Pension Secretary said the UK government did not want a referendum. For us, at the United Kingdom level, in the Westminster Parliament, do we want to bring forward a referendum? No, because we believe in the union. Contrast that with Newsnight two days before. So the Cabinet does agree with this, does it? Uh, indeed, and, and, and that Thank is you. the position that we've got. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. It's been a week of confusion and contradiction, thanks to Wendy Alexander. It might even be possible someone's not been telling the truth. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies.